Alec Elric, the Primarch of the Celestial Sons, had lived a life full of lies and suffering due to the machinations of the Chaos God of Change, Zeech. Since the time of Elric's gestation pod cracking, Zeech had left his touch upon the Primarch, causing illusions and nightmares to plague him, with each vision plunging his psyche deeper and deeper into the depths of darkness. It was Zeech's schemes that placed Elric upon the planet of Kyosha Vor, which was already under his rule via the Council of Three. The events that transpired upon Kyosha Vor literally broke Elric both mentally and physically. Despair swallowed the Primarch at seeing his homeworld and people die before him. At the reveal of the Council of Three being a demonic follower of Zeech, his mental fortitude shattered. All he ever knew was a lie. He was used as a pawn, and all his accomplishments were orchestrated by Zeech. To try and cope with this overwhelming realization of his uselessness and loss of free will, Alec Elric materialized a second personality, a more ruthless and sadistic side. Even though the Emperor of Mankind knew of Zeech's puppet strings upon Elric, he still allowed his son to lead the 11th Legion as their Primarch. Elric fully pledged himself towards accomplishing the Emperor's goal, the unification of mankind. This would be the foundation for Elric to stand upon and rebuild himself. Meanwhile, deep within the dark corridors of the Crystal Labyrinth, the architect of fate laughed as he thought to himself that everything is going all according to plan. Throughout the Great Crusade's early years, the Emperor couldn't ignore the duality of Elric. Due to his traumatic experiences at witnessing his people's demise, Elric and the Celestial Sons liberated hundreds of human civilizations from the rule of Xenos, and as such, he was called the Hope of Humanity and the Light of the Imperium. While in reality, he was still recovering from his despair, and he was hiding the darkness of his dual personalities. Most of the time, Elric was a calm, collected, and stoic tactician, but when his other persona took over, he would become a crazed man, and he would lash out in fits of burning rage. To counter these outbursts, the Angelus Solaris were created as the honor guard to their Primarch. Indeed, the Celestial Suns casted a bright light of hope, but in this grim dark galaxy, even the brightest light will cast a dark shadow. Ooh, foreshadowing. But yeah, at this point in time, Alec Elric eventually undergoes his descent towards chaos spoiler alert i haven't gotten to that in the official lore but that is what's gonna happen i've had that plan for years now and it's just been taking me a long time to get to that point um in actual words on paper stamped with the official unofficial stamp um but basically when i play this guy on the battlefield at least the loyalist version of my primarch I was kind of stuck between like a rock and a hard place because when you look at Primarchs in Warhammer 40k you have a ton to choose from in Horus Heresy which uses a different rule set than 40k 9th edition and unfortunately the only loyalist Primarch currently out is Gilliman but that kind of works because when you look at my Primarch for my 11th Legion, the Celestial Sons, Alec Elric, he actually has a lot of similar weaponry to Gilliman. So actually on the tabletop, this works out really perfectly. The only downside is that since when I play my Celestial Sons, I play them as a mix of Adeptus Custodes and Grey Knights. So it's a very elite, very small army. And when I play Alec Elric leading my Grey Knights and Custodes, he can't do that very well. He does have a certain rule that allows Imperium forces to benefit, 
but for the most part his auras only affect um, ultramarines um, I guess I could change it but in terms of keeping things legal and not over like overriding rules um, I decided to just play him as Gilliman without changing anything up because um, when you start changing things tweaking things adding a weapon here adding a special rule there you get to the point where you're kind of tipping the scales from playing 40k as it's meant to to creating an overpowered character and that's not to say that 40k is balanced and doing homebrew rules for a primarch would be unbalancing it because at the end of the day you could have a super op character and just roll really bad dice rolls and they don't do anything so it's just easier to just keep things the way they are and just kind of reskin it and that's exactly what I've done with Gilliman as Alec Elric. The cool thing is is that he's got really good armor defensive capabilities too so that 3 up invuln save that 2 up save will keep him going for a good amount of time especially with 9 wounds and a toughness of 6 so that works out perfectly. And the only thing, like I, like I was saying earlier, that benefits the army in general is the Master of Battle Aura, which gives my units an additional advance and charge roll of plus one as long as they're within 12 inches of him. So that's great. And not just that, but they also get to reroll hit rolls of one, um, which works for, like I said, anything with the Imperium keyword, which counts Custodes and Grey Knights. In this army, for the most part, I want to get it into close combat. Grey Knights, they can shoot, but their weapons, halberds, swords, demon hammers, that kind of thing, falchions, they really shine in close combat. Same thing with the Adeptus Custodes. You want to go up the board as fast as possible, you want to tie things up in close combat, because that is where they shine. And Gilliman helps them get there just a little bit faster, and gives them a little bit more punch as long as they're hitting with their re-rolling ones and since they're custodies most of the time they're hitting on twos re-rolling ones they're gonna hit like 99 percent of the time so it's really beneficial the other thing too is you do have the avenging sun ability which if you are battleforged then you have to have gilliman as your warlord which kind of sucks because <laughs> don't get me wrong uh, Gilliman makes sense to be the warlord of an army, but sometimes you have like Drago or Voldis, or you have your own commander with like a better warlord trait or something like that. So it makes sense, it's thematic, but it still kind of dampers down the mood. Um, regardless of that, when we're going to the weapons and war gear that Alec Elric has, that Gilliman, like it, it's really good. Um, when you look at the image here, you can see that one of his hands or one of his fists is bigger than the other. That's basically a power fist, or in this case, the Hand of Dominion, which works just like a power fist. Doubling your strength, AP minus 3, 4 damage, so he can punch things <laughs> really good. He can also use the Emperor's Flaming Sword, which in the lore, Gilliman or Gilliman, Alric does have a sword. That's kind of his secondary weapon, which he uses his psychic abilities to light it on fire. Um, so that's that, that works perfectly. But his main weapon unfortunately can't be utilized here. Um, for the whole beginning part of the lore for, for Alec Elric, his main weapon is a spear that he found that uses the tip as a Catan shard. Unfortunately, he doesn't know it's a, can a Catan Shard, but using a freaking Catan Shard as a weapon is really great. And Gilliman doesn't have that in his profile, so unfortunately, that's just something that's lost in translation from homebrew to actual tabletop. And not much I can do there. Um, I was thinking, since it has a Catan Shard, maybe it's like anti-psyker. Um, but that would also kind of explain why Gilliman doesn't have any psychic powers. And my Primarch would normally have it. Um, 
but once he transitions into chaos that's when he really becomes a powerhouse and the way that i would use him in a chaos army is as magnus the red i almost chose abaddon in the spoiler but i recently played abaddon in a game and he is crap he was just bad <laughs> um maybe i didn't play him correctly but he just got washed for the points that abaddon costs he didn't do anywhere near what he was supposed to and when you look at this beast of a demon primarch which kind of is what he is alec elric really is embodied better by magnus the red in my opinion especially with the slew of chaos warper capabilities and weapons and whatnot i think that works much better so looking at magnus the red he does clock in at a whopping 465 points almost 500 points that is a lot but he has a slew of psychic powers that he can do the gaze of magnus is really great um the way that i kind of have him being played with psychic powers that fits elric the most is doom bolt the infernal gateway and zeech's firestorm this can all be reflavored as launching a bolt of lightning with doom bolt uh, basically just doing three, d3 mortal wounds and having movement and allowing those guys that do get hit to not be able to advance that is really good <laughs> that is really good really strong the next ability that works perfectly is zeech's firestorm it's basically Alec Elric opening a rift into a sun and just decimating everything in warp flame. Uh, being able to pick anything within 18 inches of him, you roll 9 dice and any roll of a 6 is a mortal wound. So really, it's all about fate. You could get 9 6s and just obliterate whatever you're attacking, or you could roll nothing. Um, it's all a toss up. But Doombolt is really good. I have to have that. And for the last power, you could switch it up. But I decided to go with Inferno Gateway. So basically what you do is you identify the nearest enemy model within 12 inches of the Primarch. And then that unit and every other unit within 3 inches of that model will suffer D3 mortal wounds. The number of wounds inflicted is D6 if you manifested it with a psychic test of a 12 up. And that's not hard at all to do with Magnus. He's got a ton of buffs, a ton of boons. His degrading stat line doesn't go down very much really. And you do get a bonus to your psychic phase depending on your wound count. So again, you're pretty much gonna be rolling really good, really great. And um, his warp psychic sword is represented i think pretty good with the blade of magnus because anytime you kill an enemy as long as it's a character they become a chaos spawn that will be written into the lore much later on but it's coming and it'll be good <laughs> so that's what i got for my primark you've got the beginning of his lore um i will continue it hopefully hopefully sooner than later i'm currently writing the final part to the edict of obliteration chapter five for my official unofficial fan homebrew lore of the 11th legion the celestial sun so hopefully that'll be out this sunday at the latest next sunday but yeah let me know what your thoughts are um let me know what you think about this do you think abaddon would be a better choice or should i have gone with more terry and then just reskinned things but let me know your thoughts, and if you guys have created your own homebrew chapter or homebrew Primark, let me know down below what you decided to do, how do you play them, and the lore for those guys. Thanks again. This has been the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.